Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. What next for Fred Okengo Matiangi? That's the question which most Kenyans are currently asking, especially after he exited the cabinet. Because Fred Matiangi was the most powerful cabinet secretary in the Republic of Kenya. He was feared and he was the biggest enemy of the allies of William Samoy Araproto. And they promised to jail him and to punish him. But what next for Fred Okengo Matiangi? This is my principal secretary. I take full responsibility. Ukigusa yeye umenigusa. Tuko pamoja. Kwa hivyo usiende huko anza kuambia watu eti oh unajua ni kibicho tunakorogana na yeye. Nini hakuna na hakuna. Lazima tuambiane tu ukweli na wananchi lazima tuambie ukweli. Hasa kwa sababu sisi vile niliwaambia sisi si viongozi wa siasa. Atupigi debe kupendana huko kufanyia mapendeleo kazi yetu is not public relations ku impress mtu kazi yetu ni kufanya kazi kwa hivyo tutaendelea kufanya kazi na niseme hapa hadharani leo the rule we have in security sector sisi katika usalama wa nchi na ninawaambia wenzangu hapa police commanders wako hapa na regional commissioners the edict in security is one until you hear from the commander in chief you move in one direction forward that is it. Until you hear from the commander in chief, you, meet, you move in only one direction. Na direction hiyo ni forward, mbele. Sababu commander in chief akibadilisha mwenendo atasema. Kama achabadilisha mwenendo, ile command alitoa ya kwanza ndio tunatumia mpaka mwisho. Na hiyo command inasema tuende mbe, mbele. Tuweke ji yetu pamoja. Kwa hivyo sisi tutazidi kufanya kazi na kibicho. Huyu ndugu in this video, I want us to look at what next for Matiangi, the options he has. But before we do that, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two, click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without the support, this channel cannot be where it is now. Let us get back to the main issue. But before we continue, please give this video a thumbs up. You can also drop your comments. That's the best way you can support the channel. And for those who can, please also share this video in your various social media platforms. Now, let us get back to the main issue. William Ruto named his cabinet. And Fred Matiangi officially stopped being the third most powerful individual in this country. And before making those announce announcement, cabinet announcement, William Ruto, on the 19th day of September, issued a circular through Joseph Kenywa. In that circular, which was uh, headlined, transition from the fourth administration to the fifth administration, he made five things very clear. That the cabinet will no longer make new appointments in the state corporations. You know, cabinets can make appointments because remember, even... Uh, uh, just a few days before Uhuru Kenyatta, I mean, before Kenyans went to the polls, Uhuru Kenyatta made almost 200 new appointments. And Kenya Kwanza were not happy with that. So Ruto made that declaration that the ministers were not going to make any appointments to the board. And that, number two, the ministers were no, no longer allowed to make any ministerial deployments. Number three, they were no longer allowed to make any new policy pronouncement and number four they were also no longer allowed to make any payments payments of tender beyond 50 million and lastly which forms the basis of this analysis they were banned cabinet ministers were banned from traveling outside the country and i did a comprehensive analysis why they were banned and for me william ruto being a shrewd politician had realized that some of these cabinet secretaries were actually planning to leave the country. So he said, no cabinet minister was going to leave the country. And just on the same day William Ruto was making his new cabinet appointments, he convened a cabinet meeting with all Uhuru Kenyatta's cabinet ministers. And the question which came to my mind was, why would Ruto convene a meeting or a cabinet meeting 
with the ministers who are leaving office and you could tell from the mood of those who attended that meeting that there was serious tension and for me i also i, I tend to think that the main reason why william ruto invited all these cabinet secretaries to this specific meeting was simple william ruto wanted to do two things number one he wanted to the, the cabinet secretaries to hand over peacefully which they did number two he also wanted to show them that is now the boss someone like fred matiangi people like joe musheru rafael tuju you know they were very clear that ruto was not really necessary and that the, the only boss was uhuru kenyatta so by ruto bringing them together he was simply telling them that i am the boss and i also tend to think that the main reason why ruto invited them all of them to this particular meeting was to show them that he can do whatever he wants that power is living but what next for fred matiangi because remember uhuru kenyatta fell out with ruto and uhuru kenyatta had promised that he was going to support ruto and uhuru kenyatta being the president of the republic of kenya decided that some of the roles through executive order number no. 1 of 2019 he decided that most of the roles which were being performed by the deputy president were handed over to fred matiangi so fred matiangi became the biggest enemy of uh, allies of the dp of course there were others people like rafael tuju Peter Munya, John Musheru, David Murade, Atuli, Kibicho, Wamalwa, and all those others. But I don't want to get into those. I want to get into Fred Matiangi because Matiangi was also holding this powerful docket of interior coordination. So what next for him? In my view, Fred Matiangi, the first option for Fred Matiangi is to join politics. If I were to advise Fred Matiangi, I would advise him to join politics why that's the only place where he can be safe but is fred matiangi a politician some people will argue that he's not a politician but who was born a politician most of these people are not politicians and over the years some of them have may ended up making the best politicians so if i were to advise matiangi he would join politics his party already has he formed a party which already has a, a governor in kisi in nyamira he can uh, concentrate because as a cabinet i mean as a minister for interior i'm sure he has accumulated enough wealth so he can then begin by consolidating the kisi or the gusi region so that he becomes the face of gusi politics he can team up with simba arati because simba arati was actually appointed the gusi spokesperson and being a governor he might not perform those two tasks so the first thing for me is fred matiangi to join politics simple joining politics team up with a with a arati becomes the gusi leader then in case he will be he will be targeted then he can use politics to shield himself from unnecessary attacks from kenya kwanza because one thing i know for sure is that william ruto is vengeful and his team are very bitter with Matiangi and if they are given opportunity and a chance they are likely to go for Matiangi the only safe place is to join politics then he can after consolidating Kisi he can then team up with Raila Odinga he can team up with Kalonzo and form a formidable force which can oppose the government so that any time they'll try to to target him they will respond politically so that's number number 2 most tend to think that Fred Matiangi just like uh, most people believe is not really a politician per se in my view he can get some international appointments get international jobs initially there were the talks that uh, he had secured some place with the UN which i doubt but Fred Matiangi used to lecture Fred Matiangi is a consultant having served also as a serious cabinet secretary in the Republic of Kenya he has created networks in fact even Uhuru Kenyatta can help Fred Matiangi secure a job so for me Fred Matiangi can still go outside the country in a safe country like the US or UK secure job there work there then make a comeback later when things are settled because as long as things have not settled when Ruto sees Matiangi like this what do you think comes to his mind when Rigadi Gashagwa sees Matiangi like this what do you think comes to his mind so for me 
Fred Matiangi would be safe and much safer when he is actually outside the country. Then, of, of course, it will reach a point where, for example, William Ruto himself might need Matiangi. Maybe politics, because politics is dynamic, maybe, maybe it, it will change. So, for me, that's the best option also for him. Number three is that he can decide to take a break from politics. Can just go under, disappear. Be Fred Matiangi. But is that safe for him? I don't think that will be safe for him. He will be targeted. Because Ruto will, will want him to apologize. William Ruto's allies, like I'm seeing Osoro all the time, attacking him, ridiculing him. So taking a break would help, but I don't think it's one of the best things which he can do. Taking a break from politics, for me, and taking a break just from the limelight, just to concentrate on his own things, the level of Fred Matiangi had reached, for me, is not the best for him. But again, his uh, Matiangi, he might know what to do. And lastly, Fred Matiangi can work his way back into William Ruto's camp. You know, politics is dynamic. It changes. William Ruto might not need Matiangi now. But rest assured that Raila Odinga, Kalonzo Musioka are likely to start agitating for some changes in this country by January next year. That's one I can guarantee you. If that's going to happen, I can tell you for sure that Ruto will require the people like Matiangi. Because of course, politics is, will also, other things will, will also change. Maybe a fallout here and there. Some people not happy here and there. So they need to be replaced. So for me, he can join Ruto, but that's not the best for him. Joining Ruto, when Ruto has already won the presidency, it's not good. In fact, someone was telling me that the main reason why the deep state did not really support Raila Odinga was because of Raila Odinga's blunder. When Raila Odinga named those four cabinet ministers, when he named uh, Oparanyas the minister for finance, he named Joho the minister for um, lands, he ended up naming, uh, who was that? He ended up naming uh, Peter Munya the minister for agriculture and Kalonzo Musioka as the chief cabinet secretary. The fact that he left out the name of Matiangi is what annoyed Matiangi and he said, okay, I'm now not going to consider this guy because he's not considering me. <laughs> but those are just rumors within the corridors of power. I don't know what you think, but for me, those are some of the options which Matiangi can pursue. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye-bye.